Hi, I'm Nathan Carlton from Sample Library Review, and today we'll take a first look at Nada by Eduardo Taralante and Best Service. Now, before Nathan digs into the first look to play through a ton of great content in Nada, I just want to announce that we're going to be giving away one copy of Eduardo Taralante's Nada Sample Library here. All you need to do to enter is comment below sharing with us which is your favorite patch that Nathan previews in this first look video. The winner will be randomly selected from the comments and announced on the Deal Compressor on February 28th, 2020. Look for a link to the Deal Compressor below. We look forward to hearing what your favorite patches are from the sample library. All right, I'll hand it back over to Nathan. This library breathes and moves, and playing the instruments instantly allows you to drift into the stream of flow. Flow is something we all seek in today's turbulent times, and Nada is a welcome reminder to, at all times, remain present and mindful. In his 2020 NAM interview with Sample Library Review, Eduardo said the name of the library is based on the Sanskrit word meaning the first sounds of the universe. Other Sanskrit definitions also translate to English as flow, such as a river flowing. There are yoga practices and ancient metaphysical and philosophical systems based on the whole premise that, that sounds and vibrations are in fact the building blocks of our universe. The library installs at about 14 and a half gigabytes. There's over 440 sounds, over 9,000 samples. They're in the categories of strings, winds, percussion, pianos, bowls, glasses, bells, overtone singing, female solo voice, and meditation pads. They were sampled keeping simplicity and usability in mind, and recorded with true legato plus optional ornaments and recorded phrases. The sample library requires Engine uh, version 2.6.1 or above. With the basics out of the way, let's dive into the instrument itself. When we switch to the browser, we see that Nada opens up with Instruments, Meditation Pads, and Voices. In the Instruments tab, the first uh, item is Percussion. There's also Piano, Strings, and Winds. In the Percussion, there's Pitched and Unpitched. So we'll start with the uh, Balafon, Bells, Bowls, Crotales, Glasses, Kalimba, and Music Box are next. The first patch is Balafon Fantasy. And then we can switch back to quick edit to kind of see which controls they've given us, like uh, delay, uh, reverb, some pitch, pan, and attack and release controls. Beautiful sounds. I think I can just hit the down button here to get the regular balafone. Dream Bells 1. Dream Bells 2, more controls down there. Thank you. 
four. Here's five. Okay, so meditation bells are next. Looks like there's some vibrato intensity. <laughs> now this has a full keyboard. Their velocities sure have a clangorous. Feel, but it's much more delicate up top. Meditation bells four. Six. Seven. Eight. So here we are with uh, temple bells. Temple bells. Three. Okay, I'm holding it down and it it does sustain this time the jingle jangles. I'm still holding it so it, it let it go after a little while. I did let it go. So a little bit of extra ringing on this one. Tibetan Bell One. <laughs> Tibetan.
Tibetan bell two. Tibetan bell three. Four. Tibetan Bell Dreams One. Dreams Two. Okay, dreams three. Now this is Tibetan Bell Ensemble one. Some of these have a decidedly low frequency presence, even in the upper ranges. You can hear a warm... low kind of pulse under there, as you, almost like you can hear the beater hit the bell as well. Tibetan Bell Ensemble 2. seeming to uh, work really well up high. There must be other bells that... You can kind of hear the pitch shifting when you move low. Stereo effect here. where the second slightly delayed hit is coming out of the right channel for my headphones. Meditation Crystal Bowls 1. So Crystal Bowls. bit of a warped sound there if you play it let's play a chord see what this soft start button does there we go kind of a ring into it next Number three. 
So holding it down, uh, you can change the feel of um, which 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 is sustaining and which is going to let go. So nice and playable that way. Now this is nice and deep. Meditation Crystal Bowls 4 is definitely sounding nice in the low range here. Moving on to Meditation Crystal Bowls 5. Soft start. Six. Now you can see the variety here and we may not need to go through all of the variations as we move on because you can see the, uh, the amount of variety and the depth of the package is so uh, rich. There's a lot of material here. Crystal bowl seven, eight. Now we get to a crystal singing bowl. Looks like we've got some key switches down here or something. Let's see. So, wow, almost feeding back there. switch the patch here uh, you know <laughs> let's try a different one feels like different techniques you can access on these blue channels the le this one has a very long ring out uh, let's move past the crystal singing bowls so meditation Tibetan bowls. Let's move past some of the bowls. Um, Crotales. Very acoustic. Kind of harmonic spectrum here. Okay, fantasy glass. Very nice. Of course, more variations. Feels like I could rewrite some labyrinth music here. Begin a... Soundtrack to a whole different world of music. We'll move past some of the variations here. Fantasy Glass has seven variations. Glass Ensemble. Very intimate click on this attack. Let's see what 
kind of chords we can get out of here. It does let you uh, hold out the notes. Play some jazz if you want. Glass Symphony. So these are slower attacks, it sounds like. Looks like there's a few of those. We've got glass one uh, played with a finger. So this would be that technique where you wet your finger and create friction around the rim of probably a wine glass or a instrument designed to make these beautiful sine waves. Gorgeous. Mallet. Very delicate, beautiful sound. So there's a few of these uh, mallets here. I'll stay in A for a while. softer mallet here, it's more of a rubber mallet maybe. Kind of makes me wonder what it sounds like with the reverb off. Let's take that off for just a second. That was glass one mallet three. Glass one mallet three. And it goes through uh, these. Um, so we've got glass two with some different mallets. Should probably move on so we don't spend three hours playing mallets and glass. Whoa.
That was glass three, mallet two. Uh, mallet three is a little softer again, maybe a rubber mallet. Mallet four seems to be the softest. Okay, glass four, mallet one. Sounds like they've synthetically altered this, perhaps. To pronounce another harmonic in there. Class five with the finger friction technique. Just ringing out there. Class five with the mallet one, which is the hardest of the mallets, I think. Interesting that that's glass because it does sound very metallic. Thin metal, I guess. Eh, glassy. Yeah, it's glass. Especially when you get up here. More metallic down there. Maybe it's some of the artifacting of the pitch shifting. That, that sounds nice. Okay, so we go through the mallets. Wind, glasses long, major one. So I'm expecting a chord. I see, if you look at the keyboard here, I'm holding down a green key and uh, perhaps a MIDI file is getting played up here. So this is the note that I'm holding down. And all of this magic is happening automagically. Let's see if they're gonna give us so two majors. Three majors. called wind glasses. Let's see if we can get to the minors here. There we go. The general dynamic range is heavily influenced by how hard I have hit this first key. I can hit it lightly in the entire pattern has a nice uh, light feel with some dynamic variation in it. If I hit it harder, you can hear lots of uh, harder notes, but still dynamic variation. Major seventh in this minor, otherwise minor scale. Yeah, interesting patterns. I like this concept as well that you can 
kind of introduce a, a well-played, a very kind of human feeling arpeggio-ish pattern here. So this is um, a pentatonic one. This is, would be a major pent pentatonic. More major pentatonic. Now we're at wind glasses major up one. So there's a bunch of green notes down here. I'm not sure what they're going to do. Let's find out. Basically um, arpeggiating a single chord. And depending on where you're hitting it, um, will it kind of influence the uh, inversion, whether or not the third is on the bottom here, or the root is on the bottom here. So minor now. Again, dynamics are very easily playable. Everything sounds perfectly calibrated. Makes me wonder if some of the other instruments uh, are going to have some of these arpeggiated chords. So with kalimbas, I'm always listening for how much um, kind of juicy variation there is with um, irregular acoustic sounding variations. This one is very pure and um, almost synthetic, consistent, but admittedly, <laughs> Um, it's very pleasing. I'm going to take the reverb down a little bit. second Columba sounds like. Whoa, very metallic. Yeah, 
The other thing that I find interesting so far having played with it is the feeling that it, I like the way it rounds out the scales. Uh, this particular one stops at this C, begins at this C. There's a very... Um, everything uh, feels like its ranges are well defined in a easy to understand way. So music box. So a lot of this feels kind of, um, you know, inspired by. This isn't trying to be a quirky music box, obviously. It's the idea of if I wanted to, you know, work on this meditative, new age sound, and I wanted a music box like sound. This is where I would go. The reverb and delay has been carefully dialed in. I'm sure I could edit some of these things further in the engine here. Delay would be right here, it looks like. Uh, nope. That's not the effect delay. First time using the engine, so I'm not quite sure where to go to adjust that delay. But I f find that I don't really want to adjust it too much. I was just curious. So music box, symbol crescendo. All right, now there's two blue keys down here. Let's see what else is down here. Let's see what, uh, it looks like there's f six blue keys. Oh, I like that. Well, those are nice. Yeah, very cool symbol crescendos. So you select it with the key switches down here, and then you can play them all across the keyboard. Uh, then there's a symbol. So I'm not familiar with this. It says, um, well, looks like Gatam. So these two uh, red ones are rolls. Black keys are not playing any thing. You know, I think we might have entered the non-pitched percussion category. Let me take the reverb off for a second. It sounds like it's made, made of clay. And that indicates a, a diaphragm.
I'd love to see the way this instrument is constructed. Planet Gong, Chiron Effects. <laughs> I'm hearing a single phrase that was performed perhaps with some sort of rubbing on a gong. And then it's it's been processed a bit. Very creative, it sounds uh, bird-like. Now different velocities are Actually, different velocities are giving me different phrases. I'm not sure if it's round robins or velocities. Yeah, I guess it might be multiple phrases. Yeah, so there's a lot going on here. Hard mallet. Honestly, I'm always looking for these. To have it spread out all over the, the range of the keyboard is great here. It only sounds, you know, really authentic in a narrower range, but it's nice to have the option that they, it's been stretched further. Here's a softer mallet. Sounded more like a felt mallet to me. Excellent sound. Transposes very well. Hand sleigh bell. Looks like a very narrow range here. And then a jingle. Black keys don't do anything, so... Uh, looks, sounds like a lot of round robins. I can see you can control the roll volume here. Uh, you might want to map that to, you know, a mod wheel. Could have gone for a little more dynamic range, but it is good to have it automatable easily. Metal plate one. Always good to have a metal plate or two around. sort of LFO going on here. More of a special effect. Sounds like there's a few of those. Rain stick. Oh. Gotta have a rain stick. 
in a New Age collection. Sounds like this is a very delicate one. Uh, possibly multiple rain sticks. Tightness F to G4, so... Um, let's see what this is doing. Soft long, soft two, soft one, hard one, hard two, hard three. So a uh, lot of variation here. And are these different rain sticks? Oh no, this is just transposed. But they are different performances, maybe. Oh, Tabla. Looks like you can control a few different things here. I'm not going to pretend to be a tabla keyboard expert. <laughs> but uh, let's see if I can figure out. So Diane. So regular volume and the panning and then the Bayan. Uh, volume and pan and then roll volume. You could probably also automate. And then here is the bend speed control. So where's the bends? Seems kind of innovative. So uh, bend speed quickly. Bend speed slowly. I'm hearing a little distortion, so if you're hearing it, that's what I'm hearing too. It does look like we're, uh, we're up there in the volume at that loudest velocity. Where's the, here we go. I'm hearing about three uh, velocity layers. So loudest, a middle, maybe there's four. And then the quietest. Spitting finger bells, I was waiting for these. C. And a roll. These should be ching -yer.
we're almost done with the non-pitched percussion. Looks like we've got a few wind chimes left, and then we'll move on to some piano instruments, strings, and winds. Still a lot to go through. So wind chimes one, curtain. We're doing quite a lot there. Just holding one key down. Uh, let's see how many different variations we've got. So effect selection C1, C2. Some of these seem ascending, some of them seem descending. Curtain two. Looks like some good variations here, long. Oh, and there's a wind strength modulator as well. Soft ambiance. Ambience. Different instrument. Here's a third uh, wind chimes instrument. A few of those, dream piano. So now we're in the pianos. Dream Piano 2. A lot of uh, different, it, it kind of is hinting at a lot of different uh, timbres as you move through the range. Uh, at the lower range I'm hearing almost a, a log drum um, kind of sound. There's a harp, harpiness in here. And as we get up here there's a chiminess to it. While all still feeling fairly piano-esque. sort of a synthetic nylon string aspect to this part. There's a rubberiness to it, so interesting. Now that you can hear an acoustic piano frame, some of that kind of more piano-esque.
without the delay. This is a little click at the beginning. Dream Piano 5. Was Dream Piano 6, Harmonic Piano 1. Harmonic Piano 2. This goes back to those um, plucky harp kind of sounds again. Third Harmonic Piano. Fourth harmonic piano. Five. Kind of a muted string feel. Harmonic piano six, they keep going. So piano chord one, let's see what happens with a chord here. Now I played just one note and held it for a short bit. Nice arpeggiation. Oops, sorry about that.
more piano chords, harmonic piano chords. Now this uh, piano, I believe, is called New Age One. I'm pretty sure it's going to be in the piano section. Hmm, you'd use this maybe. New Age 3. White Piano Intimate 1. I'm not playing overly soft, it is a bit quieter than some of the others. I'll play a bit harder. So it's got a nice range. Looks like you can ad adjust the uh, hammer hardness and um, attack humanizer is kind of an interesting control name. if that is a timing control here, the attack humanizer, so if you quantized everything that it would potentially delay a few of them. Sounds exactly like it's named Intimate Piano. Here's the second variation. Soften that piano or that hammer hardness and see what it sounds like at a loud velocity. Yeah, a little softer. Not a huge difference.
Here's the third uh, white piano intimate sound. Slightly more muted. There's a big drop off in the dynamic feel, so between middle loudness and soft, it just almost drops into nothing, ghost notes. It doesn't slowly get quieter, so you'd need to watch your velocity playing very carefully. Or adjust them afterwards. I mean, you gotta admit, this stuff just makes you want to meditate right away. If you like just jamming out. This package is definitely gonna make you happy. Now here's some bright pianos. Very similar with that, without that kind of muted Vibe. These are kind of unbridled, released. There's still a feeling that there's a, a bit of restraint in the way that the strings are allowed to resonate, which probably helps from building up too many harmonics, overtones. So you can play some clusters and let's see how that sounds lower. So that it maintains a sense of lightness, even if there's a bit of a cluster with some major seconds together like this, or sixths kinds of feel. Suspense, but you know, add twos and sus twos and fours. It really allows the the they're clean and light. White piano soft. I mean, I think the pianists will be able to hear how useful this will be, I think. You can hear how all these um, kind of seconds and fourths and sixths f fill out without being cluttered. It's just a regular white piano.
I mean, that's five consecutive white notes, and they and they sound just as open as they might on a nice, elegant piano. So beautiful pianos, uh, moving on to harps, here's an eastern harp. And again we've got that sense of alluding to a harp without trying to be a, a traditional instrument, it's an instrument within the genre. Now this is uh, an interesting switch, ethnic violin. expression mapped uh, right now I'll be using that as well legato attack let's turn that legato attack up a bit and that glide time let's see so that would be so full is fast or slow and less is fast see what these keys are doing down here. So, uh, polyphonic or legato? We can take this dream pad off as well, it looks like. Now, maybe I change these glide time sounds to make it sound too much like a monosynth. And let's hear it uh, with the um, polyphonic. I wonder what they decided the bend range would be. So the traditional major second bend. Oh, 
Oh, and then the pad retains the pitch bend. Next we've got, oh, a koto. got a couple articulations down here. This would be a staccato pluck. And a finger. As opposed to the plectrum. Oh, a tremolo, of course. Very velocity sensitive. Feels like two different velocities. And let's see how these tremolo speeds change. There's some bends. There's a long vibrato. There's the, the bend up. And bend up short. easier to hear in the lower range, it sounds like. I mean, you can hear them, but it's just a little easier to hear them down here. Imagine the Koto getting a lot of use. Four string Tanpuri with a tuning one. So how about if I play a major scale in C and we'll hear this tuning. It's doing an extra pluck as I release the note. So these drones have uh, three speeds, fast, medium, and slow. This should be fast. This would be medium. And then there is slow.
And those three speeds are controlled by the three key switches at the bottom, not the tempo of the instrument here. Different tuning. Six string male tempera tuning one. Tuning two. So in this third tuning, we start introducing some new notes. Oh, now we're moving on to a viola da gamba. Recall this is a cello like instrument from, I guess, the Renaissance period. Could be wrong. It may have more strings than a cello. I believe it has six strings, if I remember correctly. It's a slightly reedier quality than a cello would. I need to map the expression here to something. Um, MIDI learn. <clears throat> and we'll MIDI learn this one too. Again, you can uh, emphasize the legato attack, some bow no noise, and the glide time, similar to the uh, violin. And the other violin... Um So definitely a slightly different violin uh, than the previous violin here. So now we've moved into wind instruments, bamboo flute. Again, I, I'm going to need to map the expression and the vibrato together because Really pretty. Tongue attack, some glide times. Bunsuri, Indian flute, although I won't be playing Indian scales.
concert alto flute. Concert flute, so it should have a slightly lighter range. Next we have a cornet. Looks like we've got a legato and poly polyphonic modes. A DZ. can add some ornaments. Whoops, <laughs> I let it go a little soon. That's nice, you can actually blend the ornaments in and out. Let's try that a couple times. Yeah. 
polyphonic and monophonic or legato. A uh, duduk. Adjust the reed softness. It's a great feature. It's perfectly tuned, so this 40 to 50 percent is where you'd want that crossfade to start opening up. Pretty nasally out here and pretty muted down here. right there is uh, just a fantastic control, this reed softness control. Makes me want every wind instrument I've ever played to have, <laughs> every reed instrument I've ever played to have something like this. Eastern double reed. It feels like, <laughs> uh, I was just trying to figure out what I was playing and it sounds like the beginning of, uh, I want my MTV. <laughs> I want my Eastern double read. English flageolet. If it were French, it would be flageolet. Like there's a polyphonic mode there as well. Here's a lower. We have Hulu C. This is a Chinese gourd flute. Try these ornaments out. Gotta watch which scale you stay in.
I wonder if it's... Just kind of dropping off there, the end of the phrase. down that uh, dream pad some of the time. Oh, pan pipes. That's with the tongue attack a little louder. Let's bring it into about the middle. middle. Yeah, that's a great pan pipe. We'll take the dream pad off real quick. Maybe take the reverb off as well. Shakuhachi. Really interested in the ornaments that they'll add here, since this has some pretty specific playing techniques. Yeah, great Shakuhachi playing. Some great ornaments. Here's a small wooden flute. Polyphonic mode as well. Wooden flute. Peace. 
Let's check which section we're back into now. So this feels like we've passed the instruments group and we're into the meditation pads. Looks like there's about 16 groups of these. Each of them has multiple variations. How about if we just look at the first of each? Wow, uh, the arpeggiating echoes in Moving Dreams has oh, pulsing echoes. So we'll just uh, check out a few of these real quick. Endless ref that was uh, emptiness. This is endless reflections. Enlightenment. Gentle Darkness. Illumination. Mantras. So this is Mantra 1. There's only an octave of these. I keep playing notes all over the place. So vocal, kind of mix of vocal and choir. Kind of sounds like a Tibetan monk throat singing technique with some Tibetan bowls. I think it's a Tuvan throat singing technique. But 
20 years ago where I met some Tibetan monks who sang with this technique. So, uh, moving dreams. Now we're in the arpege arpeggio echoes category. Alchemy 1, this is called. So that was one key. We'll just go through a couple of these quick. Astral one. Listen to that one ring out. change the tempo of that easily. There must be a place to change the arpeggio speed. And moving on to the pulsing echoes, alchemy echoes. I'm going to skip to Frozen Echoes. I really enjoyed the Frozen Arpeggio. Especially what happens, especially what happens when you release that kind of chimey sweep. Light Echoes. Time echoes. Wow, that, that that could be fun to play with. Here's some nature meditations, alone in the rain. Fantastic weather ambiance there. 
I don't even want to play another key that sounded so good. Here's Bamboo Forest. Buddhist Mountain Temple. Again, we have that monk uh, vocal technique, throat singing technique, drifting iceberg. Forest Awakening. So with these controls, you can kind of perform how the mix will go. Mix the birds out if you wish. Jungle sunset, so jungle ambiance. Mountain top. feel like the one key wonders. Primeval Forest. Gibbons and birds there. Rainforest Call. Sea of Dreaming Dolphins. This section is becoming a pretty intense sound effects pack for ambient environments. <laughs> sea of Dreaming Whales. Silent Beach. Let's move on to um, this section is called Peace of Mind. Placid winds. Mm -hmm. 
Serene strings. I think we know who influenced some of these sounds. Yeah, these serene strings uh, are going to be very useful for... People looking for this uh, type of pad, effectively. Silence is the answer. through one, two, three here to see what the... Variations are... For silence is the answer solitude. Stillness. And the unknown, and this has a few different um, aspects. We'll try Bells of Mystery. Mirage. Portal to the Unknown. We've got a section of voices, real voices and synth voices. Female voice, voice of silence legato. So have the I vowel or E, I guess.
Next is Voice of Silence, Om. Here's Om two. Slower close into the M. Om three. Much faster close into the M. Om four. We've got Voice of Silence phrases, and this is a group of phrases with key switches at the bottom. I am playing with the vibrato intensity to see how these two different voices meld together while adjusting. It sounds like the vibrato only on the lead voice. I see. So the, the key switches here look to be changing the key. So here's E phrases, for instance. We've got a phrase speed control. Minor phrases. I actually like the breath at the end there. Overtones, singing cavity one. Wow, okay, so with a mod wheel, you can control what it's calling harmonic blend. This doesn't sound uh, exactly like Tuvan throat singing. I believe this is more of the way that David Hike's harmonic choir would have um, kind of taken some of that technique and then created more contemporary compositions using some of those techniques. And if you're interested in more of this sound, look for David Hike's harmonic choir. Hikes is spelled with a Y, as I recall. And I don't know what the latest is with this style, but I was introduced to this um, through David Hike's Harmonic Choir, where they were taking some some of these techniques. Uh, earlier in the in the patch list, we were looking at some kind of Tuvan throat singing techniques. I believe it was in um, mantras here. These vocal uh, resonant sounds if you just isolate. 
manipulate the voice here. I usually associate that with kind of a Tuvan throat singing kind of technique. Could be a little off there. It's been a couple decades since I've thought about it, but... You, you take that, and then um, David Hike's Harmonic Choir uh, spent some time working on overtone singing. So we move into these singing cavity patches, and you can um, use the mod wheel and walk through different harmonic blends. Mm -hmm. And they like to use rooms that would help emphasize these whistle tones that would get pronounced. It's achieved with um, kind of putting your throat into an R position a little bit. At least that's one way of starting and kind of um, generating that second harmonic overtone blend. Here's some singing moving effects. the performance is a bit of a collaboration with your mod wheel as you're walking through different gestural shifts that have been recorded by the performer. Here's a meditation choir. There's a adjustments for different vowels at the bottom. be in the synth voices now since this does sound fairly synthetic. And Meditation Choir 2 got over in the key changes. Looks like you get to choose uh, which vowel you're working with. That was an O, here's an O. This is the M. Next synth choir is the Sacred Choir. Looks like you've got men on the left, women on the right. of the yellow keys on the left is controlling another vowel change, it sounds like. Then we've got 
crystal voices one Big dynamic range between soft and quiet based on your velocity. Ooh. Crystal voices E A. Mod wheel is controlling vowel blend now. got a real voice volume as well in there. Crystal voices eh to o oh, it looks like. Let's see what that sounds like. Voices of Eternity One. different vowels with the blue key switches. Similar, Voices of Eternity 2. Voices of Eternity 3. And the key 
key switches at the bottom let you change vowels. A couple more voices of eternity. Voices of light, female one. <laughs> Thanks for checking out the video. We would love to know what you think about Nada. How might you incorporate Nada into your music? Comment below and share your thoughts. And please like, share, and subscribe. We always love your support. And be sure to visit samplelibraryreview.com for news, reviews, and our weekly deal compressor. Mm -hmm.